What's going on guys? So we are out here at ROA Off-Road at their Experience Center just south of Salt Lake City, Utah, taking a look at some absolutely amazing off-road trailers. Not off-road capable because they're more than capable. These are off-road ready, off-road rated travel trailers. We've got them all over the place here. We've already filmed everything from here down to the end. So definitely check out those videos if you haven't had a chance. We got some more of them on this side as well including a bunch of Patriots over here. But today we are looking at this absolutely incredibly off-road capable trailer. This thing is super cool. I don't know much about this brand, so you're gonna have to kind of walk me through this. This yeah. is Shane. He's the uh, one of the owners here at ROA, and uh, he's gonna give us a guided tour of this really cool looking travel trailer. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that we've gone through so far have been imports, um, South African, Australian, Chinese. Uh, this is our very first American, 100% made in America mm -hmm. uh, brand, and this is Imperial Outdoors. And these guys have been in business for going on about 15 years, but they've been mostly in the ice house um, market, which is gotcha. for fish, fish. Fish ice fishing house. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Where you? Whatever they call them out there. Anyway, they uh, so made it to go to forty below zero. That's insane. I, I would say that is the biggest feature. But last year, I think it was last summer, we got up to almost 110 degrees here, and I put one of these out on the pavement, and I pulled the thermostat and sat it outside and turned it on so it thought it was 110 degrees in mm -hmm. there, and I got the temperature on the inside down to 43 degrees. Oh, wow. In the summer, right? That's crazy. So it's 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 essentially like a refrigerator or an igloo. It's gonna keep yeah. it hot or cold in there, whatever you want it to be. But massive off-road tires. This is a little bit different. It's, it's not on an independent suspension like a lot of the stuff that we've been seeing. This is a hydraulic lift system. You do have a lot of travel in it. It goes up and down, so you have massive amount of clearance. But this he's been using for years in the fish uh, okay. housing. It's because they drop all the way down to the ground. For Got fish. it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fishing. But around here, this is um, this is a Crane Noble fiberglass. The walls are almost three inches thick. The roof is over six inches thick. So lots of lots of uh, uh, insulation stuff right? in there. Yeah. And and one of the things that is very unique that he does is it's always one piece. He's using one piece um, composite or one piece walls. Okay. Right? Yeah. So this fiberglass is all one piece. And then the floor, it's a one piece composite material. He gets it from a company that does refrigeration trucks for semi, for semi trailers, okay. right? Um, and it's really important is because when you're talking about insulation, it's always about if you have a, you know, it's, they want to conduct through thermal bridging, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have an aluminum stud, it's going to conduct through there. So he tries to create one piece barrier. So there's no way for it to conduct. Um, Very cool. You have the cool windows. Those are the Eurovision polycarbonate windows an electric awning back here you have the uh, cargo cargo space and your spare tires with a high lift jack this is a pass-through cargo compartment all the way through it's underneath the bed so it's locked okay. right now oh they give you a little power out here i'm guessing yeah that's for a solar oh okay that's your solar yeah that's an upgrade that's not stock okay so it does have solar on the roof just over uh, about 360 watts of solar stock. Gotcha. You have an outside shower. But this is what's incredible. Notice how there's no, there's hardly any holes on the side yeah. of this trailer. He's very conscious of making sure he doesn't use a, he uses a 12 volt refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So you don't have, and then just like on demand hot water heater. So very small amount of uh, areas for uh, cold. Yeah, no, through. that's true. He's very thoughtful on that stuff. Of course, you got your cool little rota pack for extra fuel, your propane. Oh, that holds 30, 30 uh, pound cans too. Yeah, you can do. It comes stock with 20 pounders, but they've upgraded that. Got your rotating hitch yeah, this, up here, articulating. This, is, this, this, this comes with the lock and roll, which okay. is what it comes standard with. This is an upgrade that we've done here at ROA. Okay. So the big hitch. And then you have, that's just a cargo space. This is up to the roof and there's a tent up there. Oh wow, so you can actually climb up and climb up go on the tent. That the is tent. super cool. And we orientate, it comes stock sideways, but we noticed it seems to be safer to get in if you have, if you reorientate it. Okay. So that's what, that's one of the things that we can do here for you. That's um, super cool. 
Yeah, and it's an insulated tent too for cold weather. It's actually pretty good. Uh, the other thing, this roof is so, so strong. The construction, we actually have a full tour where we went out to the factory and spent a week doing tours on this being built. We have a video where we actually took a hot tub, a 2,000 pound hot tub and stuck it on the top of the roof. That's insane. To test the strength of Mind the if roof. I kind of climb up there? Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna try to do it while holding a camera. Check that out. I'm only doing this because I know everyone wants me to do this. <laughs> now I didn't go to the tent, but I'm sure he has pictures of what the tent looks like. Okay, let's check out the inside of this bad boy. Stepping up the Lippert solid steps. Well, I'm actually starting to identify a few brands. Furion 12 volt refrigerator and freezer, a very good size refrigerator too. This thing is very large for this size of trailer. Furion three burner cooktop with oven. Wow, very cool. Very nice wooden trim. What do they call this? I, I don't know what this oh, is called. Oh, tongue and Yeah, like tongue and groove. Tongue and groove. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Very cool. Nice U-shaped dinette area too. Uh, oh, so these are tricky. They're, they turn. Oh. <laughs> so they, they lock. That is cool. So check this out. So yeah, I'm just pulling on this, trying to open it, but you have to turn it like that and then it opens. Yeah. So this is one of the things that I tell people, if you go and look at an off-road trailer, so mm -hmm. Amber is a good, em Ember, right? Ember is a good example. Yeah. They're claiming to be off-road. Number one, what's the suspension? Independent suspension? That's a good sign. If they do have it, mm -hmm. that's good. They don't. I, 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 that's, a, that's one uh, mark against it not being mm -hmm. off-road. The other one is hitch, articulating hitch. And the other one I say is latches. Yeah. You know, if you have those little clip latches that just pop in with those roller balls that you buy at Home Depot for a few cents, and those doors are just gonna yeah. fly open. Well, they'll stay closed when the cabinets are empty, but if there's something in there that rolls around or shifts, hit, yeah. they're gonna go flying open. And, and if you're off-roading and you're hitting yep, something exactly. and bump, it's gonna flip open and boom, everything's gonna fall on, fall on the ground. So. Uh, can't be an off-road trailer if you don't have locking latches. That's inside. true. That's that is true. And that is actually something I noticed on the Black Series that I had that they removed. Yeah. So they had them, but then all of a sudden the one that I had to review did not have them, which was really interesting because I'd go in there and the cabinet doors would be open and the drawers would be open. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's never fun. Nice. That is some plush leather right there. Or leatherette or whatever it is, but it yeah, sure does feel plush. Yeah, it's a marine, yeah, RV. And one of the cool things that I want to show off is just this uh, okay. battery bank. These are all lithium. Wow, they so have, four, have over 400 these amp hundred, hours of yeah, yeah, 100 amp hour they're batteries. Over, they're like 120 amps, so you got about 360. Yep. And you got 100 watt panels over there. Very cool. Yeah. And then Go power MPPT. inverter. Yeah. yeah. Or solar charge controller. Yeah. Very cool. And they're soft closing drawers, too. Very nice interior. Let's go check Lots out the bathroom. Of storage in here yeah, sure. totally is a lot of storage in here. But you know what's interesting is, as nice as it is, it has a distinctly American built yes. feel on the inside. You go to like this one next to us, if you didn't check out the video, go check it out on the Conqueror that we did over here, um, or any of the other ones. They have that distinctive European kind yeah. of feel to them, Australian Absolutely. feel. This one, feels American. It feels like this is something made in the U.S. It feels very, you know, well, traditional. Well, my biggest complaint would be it's just the cabinets. Yeah. Because these cabinets are the most common cabinets that you'll see in an RV. The outside was looking pretty good. Yeah, you know, yeah. The outside looked really amazing. Really quality fiberglass and yep. everything. But you walk in here and this is a, this is a particle board, mm -hmm. you know, press board with a wrap on it, right? And yeah. It's, it's unfortunately, it's that's definitely the cheapest part of the trailer. Outside of that, it's very nice, you know, with the Corian countertops, the nice undermounted metal sink and all 12 yeah. volt. No, but. but to be honest with you, it, as nice as it is to have solid wood cabinetry, the cabinets, if they're assembled properly and they're put in place properly, they're likely never going to fail. Yeah, they're never going to delaminate unless you get just a, unless you get a lot of humidity, moisture inside. But even then, they they really hold up pretty well. They, no, they know? do. You're right. It's it, a it, look overall. Yeah, I mean, the, I would say the biggest thing would be if you like dump water on them and yes. you don't dry it up immediately. It will it will yep. absorb. But it, it certainly is 
a sign of being premium when you do have Real those cool. composites yeah. and things like that. No. Nice. Let's take a look in the bathroom. Okay, very interesting setup here, and I see why they did it, because this is a Vino's trailer. Does the light come on? Here we go. And you have a cornered shower that is in the Vino's front, so it's a creative use of space. But what it does here is it limits some of the space you have in front of your toilet for your legs a little bit. It doesn't encroach on it too much. This looks like a macerator toilet, but I could be wrong. It's a dry, it's called a dry flush. Okay, dry flush it's toilet. Like a bag, like a diaper genie. Okay. Then over here we have a solid surface countertop, undermount sink. Got a medicine cabinet up here. Good amount of space. Then you have your cornered window, which is that same type of uh, Lexan window. Very nice. But yeah, again, um, man, it, it, I love the look of this from the outside, but I gotta be honest with you, I'm not a, not a huge fan of the interior look of this. And no, it's, I think I will be once you show me some of the other ones, but. It's very cozy. It's very cozy. It feels very traditional to what you would typically see in an RV, but um, but the outside of this thing is insane. It's, yeah, the it's, outside is beautiful. And, and the components and everything I think is very premium. The wood would be, the cabinets would yeah. be the only thing that you might argue, say. And it may even not. be just the color, to be honest yeah. with you. If, if these were like a cream white, because that's what a lot of manufacturers have moved towards now, a yeah. cream white, and maybe broken it up a little bit, maybe put some like charcoal colors in. Yeah. The colors really make the interior of this. And and if they, they were a different color, it'd probably have an entirely different feel to it. Yeah, and some people have put in blinds, like curtains over them to make it a little bit more homey and decorative. Yeah. It's a uh, it's utilitarian wise. This is a fantastic trailer. It mm -hmm. works. It works very yeah. well. And but the, the the owners they are very. It's very user oriented. Yeah, it's absolutely. Not so much on the design. And the well, you also you also have to understand the mentality of folks who normally built trailers for ice fishing. Yeah. So you know it's a certain type of person that buys those trailers, and this may be absolutely what they're looking for. Kind of that rustic cabin feel. Yeah. In and, a sense. And so he actually the owner built cabins prior to building these now the new models the 2023s are completely different and i'm excited for you to see those that'll be awesome the next tour that we do yep weight what's the weight and length it's on just these? over 5200 pounds okay so about so, 6,360, all right. Well, no, actually, what's the GBWR? It's the pretty GBWR high. The GBWR is, I think, closer to 10,000 pounds. Yeah, so actually. there's a lot of payload capacity in yeah. here that is probably gonna be unused payload capacity because yeah. there's really nowhere to even put that much stuff in this unit, no, to be honest no, with you. No, there's not. They're, they do have a toy hauler version of this, mm -hmm. so you can like, and it's a ramp door back mm -hmm. here, so you can put some toys. Yeah. Uh, they've discontinued making that, uh, but you can still pick them up used on the market. Yep, I think what they basically did here, unlike a lot of other RVs in the in industry where they derate the trailer overall to only give you a couple thousand pounds, they actually know, okay, if this frame and chassis and suspension is capable of that much, let's just go ahead and put it on there. Who knows what they'll load into it. Yeah, but, um, exactly. So this is, this is half ton towable with the right truck. Uh, I would probably say more of a three quarter ton would be a good truck for like a power wagon, something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, 50, it's 5,200 pounds. So yeah. if you're fully loaded, you're going to be 6,000, six, yeah. 65. Yeah. So a good half ton would easily be able to tow this thing. Yeah. Not a problem at all. But, um, the, the challenge you're going to find is finding a truck that's as capable as a trailer in terms of off-road prowess. Yeah. For you know, sure. you'd have to do a lot of work to make a half ton that can take this to a place that this isn't going to have more capability to, to conquer than the, the half ton you're driving. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. It's fully lifted. It has a lot of clearance. Yeah. Very, very, very cool. Very good um, I'm not going to guess on price. What's the range for something like this? Uh, so, you know, it depends. There's not too many more in the market. Um, because they've kind of moved on to the newer versions. But there are some 2023s, and they're going to be ranging anywhere from seventy-five to 85000 Okay. Brand new. Uh, there's some good used ones in the market that you can get pick up for seventy. The, the nice thing is he didn't make a ton of them, so mm -hmm. the market's not been saturated. And I think there's still pretty good demand for this trailer. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that the value is going to maintain. Yeah, and plus you're, you're really... You're paying for the interior space, of course, because that's what you buy in an RV. But with something like this, you're you're paying for the craftsmanship as well as the chassis. Yeah. So sure. when we spend a lot of time outside looking at the chassis and you saw all of that stuff, that's really where you have to focus in on it because there's a lot of RV interiors that look 
nice as this, arguably nicer, might have better colors, different tones, probably don't have the really nice acrylic windows and other features, probably don't have locking latches, probably don't have four lithium iron phosphate batteries, but whenever you look at what this thing's truly designed to do and how capable it is, the fact that you can take this anywhere and really not worry about it In breaking. Alaska? Alaska, you anywhere. Know, or Death Valley, right? Yeah. Like, as far as insulation, like if you're looking Texas or Alaska, this trailer is going to perform better than yeah. anything else on the market. Canadians, mm -hmm. all you Canadians out there that mm -hmm. want a trailer that's good for winter, this is it. Yeah, very cool. Well, Shane, I definitely appreciate it again. Um, we've looked at a lot of really cool units and from here, the price goes up a little bit and uh, the, the trailers go up a little bit. Yes. So it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to both of our channels um, and you know take a look back at some of the other stuff we've done and stay tuned for the stuff we're about to release because yeah, they got some crazy stuff coming up and you're really gonna enjoy it once you start seeing this stuff over here. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.